Hey, what's going on, Jen? So, Earnestly Seeking sent me your video that he made a response to because you made a video to me, but I didn't, it wasn't sent to me or anything like that. I don't go looking through YouTube for various videos to be responding to unless it's like, even if it has my name in a tag, I'm probably not going to look at it. So, you're going to have to send it to me uh, through the email. I, I do find it kind of funny that the two people that you pointed out to as being the most outspoken ex Jehovah's Witnesses on YouTube are uh, Van Coffee Chick, who hasn't made a video in like a year and a half at this point after the, you know, if you exclude the Haiti thing, and a guy who hasn't said anything about the religion other than the fact that they're pretty much like every other religion out there. Now, on to your actual video. Your question, uh, from what I could gather, is that you visited Brooklyn Bethel and everyone there had a smile on their face and they were happy and they were like, hi, how are you? It must be nice, isn't this great, this spiritual paradise? And they're like, these people seem great. I wonder why people think that they're crazy. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in the office, in your job, you know, you've been in your job, you go to the break room and there's just people bitching and moaning about how awful your job is. They talk about how it's hell and, you know, every day it just gets worse and they just want to go home and go to bed or whatever it may be, right? Now, take that break room, cut it out and put it aside. Now, let's say that the CEO or the COO or the board of directors comes for a site visit at your work. Now, cut that out. Take that experience of everybody saying, Hi, how are you, Mr. CEO? Oh, I love my job. This is the greatest thing ever. Uh, excuse me, if I could just sew my lips to your ass just to get a little better raise, that'd be fantastic. Now, take that day and cut it out and put it next to the day on the break room, right? You see two different sides, don't you? There's two completely different experiences. Which one do you think is more realistic as to what the actual experience is like? Would you say it's the day the CEO visits or the board of directors or the COO visits? Is that a perfect snapshot of exactly what it's like working at your job? Or is sitting in the break room a perfect snapshot of what it's like working at your job day after day? day, week after week, year after year. What, what do you think it is? I'm going to say that it's probably not either, right? It's probably not at that break room because everybody's bitching and moaning at the break room. And it's definitely not the CEO visit, right? It's somewhere in the middle. Same thing here. You're going to hear horror stories about Jehovah's Witnesses who are molested and a lot of crazy stuff going on in the Witnesses. And there always has been. Um, however, Brooklyn Bethel is the headquarters of the entire religion for the entire world. Literally, entire congregations will save up and charter a bus so that they can go visit Bethel. Some people, it is the highlight of their entire year to go visit Brooklyn Bethel so they can see where their spirituality comes from. So they, it's the closest thing to spiritual paradise that they picture on earth. Okay? So... Going on a visit to Brooklyn Bethel probably isn't the best snapshot. And listening to people talk about the bad things that have happened to them due to the religion probably isn't the best snapshot either. Your best snapshot is probably talking to both. So I would probably, if I were you, if you want a real good idea of how Jehovah's Witnesses, if they're happy or if they're not, you could talk to some ex-Jehovah's Witnesses and talk to some current Jehovah's Witnesses. But here's the thing, the one thing that you have to look out for is, well, I'm gonna refer you to one of my own videos called How I Left the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's when I went to my parents and I told my parents, look, I don't wanna be a Jehovah's Witness anymore. Don't believe this is truth. I don't believe anything they say is right. And my parents basically told me, well, you know, while you're in our house, you gotta do what we say and essentially uh, you gotta still go to meetings, you still gotta comment, you still gotta give talks. In four years, four years I spent doing all that stuff, no one would have known the wiser that I didn't think it was the truth, that I wasn't happy there. No one would have known the wiser because believing the truth isn't always it isn't always important to a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, but the perception that they believe everything is truth and the perception that they are righteous and you know just 
incredibly uh, pure and pretending that they don't have penises or any sort of sexual impulses whatsoever is extremely important. So when you're dealing with any sort of group that a, uh, a perception is so important, it's going to be really hard to break back that curtain unless you're already um, too deep to realize, okay? I would say you don't even get the real deep teachings until you're actually a Jehovah's Witness. And then once you're really a Jehovah's Witness is when the facade kind of comes off. And at that point, um, I don't know if you've heard about this, but there's a practice called disfellowshipping, right? Now, to be a Jehovah's Witness, you have to, have to, have to, um, just avoid any sort of association with anyone who is not a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15.33, right? Bad associations spoil useful habits. So as you're encouraged, as you're being love-bombed uh, by Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, bringing you deeper and deeper into the religion, um, and as you're being taught teachings, not necessarily the full teachings, and as you're becoming uh, more of a Jehovah's Witness, you're also cutting out more of your outside life because bad associations are to be, you know, spurned, and more and more of your life involves Jehovah's Witnesses. And by the time you could actually make a decision whether you really want to be a Jehovah's Witness or you really don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness, at that point your life is already interlinked, right? For some of us, our whole families were inside the Jehovah's Witnesses. And what was our choice? Um, you know, it, it, is the choice really to leave? Were we happy there? Well. We're happy having relationships with our friends and our family, but were we happy being Jehovah's Witness? It's not always the case. Regardless, I'm getting off topic. The, your whole question was, don't you think that some people could just be happy being Jehovah's Witnesses? And the answer to that question is, of course, of course, of course someone could be absolutely thrilled, just tickled pink to be a Jehovah's Witness. It is entirely possible. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of David Hasselhoff, but those crazy fucking Germans love that guy to death. So there's a niche for everything. I mean, look at the internet. There's a niche for everything. If I wanted to watch a video about cats that like surfing, there is probably a club of people who are dedicated to cats who surf, right? So. Yeah, there's definitely more than a distinct possibility there are people out there who just absolutely love being a Jehovah's Witness. But, um, I don't know if that really answers your question, to be uh, quite honest with you. Um, I guess the, the short answer is, could people be happy being Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah, absolutely. It's totally possible. Uh, in fact, it's not only possible, it's probable. There's a good chance there's a pretty big percentage of Jehovah's Witnesses of 7 million people that really like being Jehovah's Witnesses. However, I will bring to your attention that they have the lowest attrition rate of any religion on the face of the earth. It's uh, a little above 30%, which tells me that you know nearly 70% of uh, the entire religion uh, ends up leaving which would tell me that they're probably not that happy, and uh, that perceived uh, perfection that you saw, um, you're gonna have to you know, pull back the curtain, see the man that's standing there operating the machine. But uh, I guess that's it for now. I probably talked way longer than 10 minutes, but uh, that'd be uh, Tim Kilgore signing off. I hope to hear more from you, Jed.